this first area, there's 10 uh, major area of um, criteria that I have um, just kind of personally utilized, um, four of which is the bite model, um, which some uh, people might be familiar with uh, who have read uh, Stephen Hassan. Um, but uh, this, there you go, there you go. Uh, so number one, um, this major criteria is um, falling under the area of centralized leadership structure. And I mean, obviously, if you have two human beings who um, you believe are mother and father God, you know, um, then y you you can kind of check that off. But um, you're literally praying to them. They wow. literally, you know, during service, they sing worship hymns to these two Korean people. They praying to them. They cry to them. Everything is literally like there. It's it's idolatry. OK. Um, all right. So. I'm going to go ahead and uh, change over to gallery view here. Um, so, uh, first, they receive their authority from God. Yes or no? Oh. Yes. Uh -huh. They have a study called What is the Gospel? Um, where they say that, you know, we are ministers of the new covenant. So we are approved by God to preach the gospel. Okay. And Anson Khan broke the seals to reveal the truth in the last days. Oh, okay. Well, that, yeah, it's definitely something that's only Jesus, right? Um, so they speak on God's behalf. Yes. Yeah, so they're the only true church. All the other churches are Babylon. And uh, they did an uh, they did an interview with the UN, um, you know, back in I think 2010, 2011, where one of the people within the UN said to Kim Joo Chol, you are a spokesperson of God. And the church really used that as like, yeah, to basically say, yes, he is a spokesperson of God. So yes. Okay. They are never wrong. Oh, abs yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Even when they it break the end of the yeah. world, even when they <laughs> release new editions of their book and take sections out and reword them where you gotta give back the old edition of your book, you know, they're never wrong. Yep. Okay. They must always be followed. I'm sorry? They must always what? They must always be followed. Oh, absolutely. They say just obey. Absolutely. And they interpret scripture for you. Oh, yeah. Abs I mean, yeah, I just explained that with the Rudy David prophecy only on Sung Hong interpret the Bible yeah and they'll read certain passages like chapters of the Bible they'll stop at a certain verse but they won't read the next verses and the next verses would have disproved them all along you know what I mean so okay. they kind of just are very selective in which parts of scripture they're gonna look at okay so uh, major criteria number two this is where we get into the bite model and the first uh, B is for behavior control And so um, the group controls your time. Yep, absolutely. Well, you saw, yeah, there's a major time suck. Of any group out there, this group is uh, lost years of your life. Okay. Group controls your money. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yep. Group controls your relationships. Yes, absolutely. Everything's a choice between like preaching work and doing work for mother and father or living your own life. And and like, like I mentioned, they'll they'll tell people that if if so and so doesn't believe, don't you know, don't have a relationship with them or minimize your relationship with them. And they pull back love, like they do love bombing and then the farther you're not committed, they kinda of pull back that love and then you feel kind of abandoned and then they bring it back as you kinda of are more committed to the group. Got it. And then you in like a panic mode, you feel like really kind of left out. Mm -hmm. yes. Group controls your eating habits. Um. I'll just say this while you're getting ready, Kelsey. They're, they're culturally, they like to have a lot of people do Korean food like that. And they kind of, they, Korea is the holy land now. It's the, and, and they, that's the land where mother came and stuff. 
uh, and they kind of pushed a Korean fight. I don't think anything else, like as far as like, you know, Mormons with the you know yeah. beer or word of cigarettes. wisdom, yeah, um, so, or like the Seven Day Adventists with their uh, whole yeah, yeah dietary right. laws. Well, they, so, they they teach that they I mean they they teach that anything's good for food. They do you know reference that verse in Acts and you know don't eat anything with like blood still contained in it. Okay. Um, but I mean, for the most part in the traditional sense, like those other groups, like they don't really control your food, but they do, you know, they, they do force everyone to drink the, the bread or to drink the wine and the bread on Passover. Like they will, like they, they, they make sure they, they tell you to make sure the person next to you drinks every sip of that wine and take eats that entire piece of bread, even down to the babies. Okay. So that one sounds like, uh, it's kind of iffy. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. Okay. So, group controls your clothing. Yes. What you wear. Yes, because you have to wear you have to wear suits to the services, and then when you're preaching or coming to the church, it's like business casual. And women got to wear veils, so that would qualify. Yes. So they have women sit on one side of the church, men sit on the other side of the church, and women always have to wear veils on their head. That's a big thing. The veil regulation. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'd say check that box. Okay. Participation in bizarre rituals. Yes. I mean, we, we can go on and on about those bizarre rituals, but I would say the one thing that really comes to mind is um, uh, this one was weird. Um, we couldn't, like, when we gave offerings or ties to the church, like, we couldn't, like, bend the dollars. And it always had to be dollars, couldn't be coins, because they said God's no not coins homeless. Allowed. They said God's not homeless, no coins. It was really because they just didn't want to count the coins. But um, so they told us like we couldn't like you know fold the dollar and put the dollar the dollar bills in there. Like they had to be like smooth. So some people, a lot of people, will go like along the lines of like ironing their money to make sure it's like crisp. and perfuming it for mother. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's another thing. I mean, yeah. come on, Jason. Do when you're your church or a pastor, do people perfume the bills on Sundays? I hope not. <laughs> that kind of uh, would be disorienting when you go to count it. <laughs> um, another it's thing, odd. Another thing they do that's, that's kind of, um, that, that that's actually one of the reasons why they don't invite uh, people off the street into the church to come and keep a service without studying is at the end of the service, they have something called Prayer of Our Wishes. And that's a prayer that's done completely in Korean. Even though we're in the U.S., it's com- it, in the, there's an English version. Actually, a lot of members don't even know the English version. They only know the Korean version. So they, they, they dissuade people, or they dissuade us from bringing people, like, into the church for the first time to the service because that kind of, like, freaks people out that we do, like, a Korean prayer. Okay. All right. Major criteria number three is number two of the bite model, the eye information control. And so, first off, only allowed to read group produced materials. Absolutely. Massive. Um, no going on the internet. Why, Kelsey? Oh, they teach that the internet is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay. And, <laughs> which, is, which is ironic because they, are, they have a very heavy internet presence. And actually, you know, just to kind of a quick funny thing is while we were doing this video, I actually got an alert on my phone from Facebook saying someone would try to log into my account. <laughs> so Uh-oh. I'm going to tell you, they have a strong internet presence. They're probably watching this video right now. Um, okay. And so, um, yeah. They control it, what you can read, what you can't. Yeah. Talking to ex members, reading clit- critical literature, that whole thought thing. It's like ICC, you know, going in the internet is spiritual pornography. Kip McKean says that whole thing. And actually, with because um, because of COVID, they've had to keep you know services like or some places they or some locations they've had to keep services like virtually. Um, and so what they were doing before is that they had like they, they would send YouTube clips or YouTube links to um, the members so that they would all watch the same like video, um, you know, like like yeah, video from their own computer. Um, but they actually stopped sending YouTube links and started to, I, I think, embed the YouTube videos in their um, their own website because what was happening is, is people was looking at, was going to the YouTube like link and our videos from Great Life Studios were coming nice. up, yeah. and so. <laughs> 
so so people uh, to so people wouldn't come across our videos. That's <laughs> yeah. They're having an impact. <clears throat> All right. Uh, group withholds information. Yes. Ab absolutely. They do it in two levels. So when you're studying with them, mm -hmm. uh, you ask them questions, your initial studies. Is it, oh, we'll show you that later. We'll explain that later. You know, they kind of do that. And then at, when you're actually a member, they do it again on different levels. So like one of the main books they give, we call it the green book. But they don't give you this book typically to six months you're in the church. you got to pay your tithes, go to your three Sabbath service, midweek service, a third day service, all this kind of stuff. And then, you know, be able preaching. And then six months you're worthy. And then after, you know, a few more months, then they start to give you other, An Hong's other truth books. And that's when you start to get these. But yeah, they withhold it. So I always kind of joke around and say, can you imagine someone becoming a Christian? And it's like, okay, you can read the Gospel of John and Romans now, but got a little wait time before you can read Galatians and Colossians you know like you're not allowed to read those yet until you're ready mm -hmm. you know they're they're very weird about stuff like that and okay. like I said they don't even reveal like before someone gets baptized you know they might not even know An Sung Hong's name they might not even know this church believes that you know An Sung Hong is God or that you know a woman living in Korea now is God and they definitely don't know her name before they're brought into the church but by the time they find out they're already, you know, sucked in through the, like the love bombing and all the other tactics that it doesn't even phase them. Okay, uh, the group lies to its members or non-members. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You're allowed to lie. You know, if you go to Walmart and uh, <laughs> you're evangelizing, preaching in Walmart, and this, he's trying to act like, oh, no, or, or they love to give the wrong name to the group. So, like, if you're on campus, they don't say, hey, we're from the World Society Church of God, so people are going to Google it. They'll say, oh, I'm from the Elohim Academy or the Seven Thunders or mm -hmm. whatever they want to say, but they kind of hide their name a lot. Or, or when people say, what church do you go to? They, they're very adamant in saying, oh, I'm from the Church of God. Because if yeah. you Google Church of God, you're gonna get like thousands of different kinds right. of churches. But if you Google uh, World Mission Society Church of God, right, then you yeah. get some specific. Okay. First time they came to my door, they said they were Elohim Academy. I knew who they were. Mm -hmm. hmm. The group changes its history. Oh. Oh, they've rewritten you know, the whole what's, thing. What's, what's funny about the history is that they don't even most of the members don't even know the history of the church they, they we were told for the longest time that Ansan Hong was alone that they have songs still today saying you know he was alone for 37 years meanwhile after the examining site came out we find out he wasn't he had a wife until like he was married for like 30 years 30 something years he had like three to four kids you know like and they said oh when when that came out they said oh we never said he was alone but it's like in their book they they changed their history and then not only do they change it, but then they claim they never said something else before. So they gaslight. They, they predicted the end of the world in 1988, 1999, 2012. And just like Kelsey said earlier in her testimony, they just kind of rewrite that whole thing. Well, we never said, just like the Jehovah's Witnesses will do. Like, you know, they'll go ahead and blame it on the members and not take responsibility. The governing body is not at fault. It's all the members who were coming up with this. Yeah. All right. Pyramid style doctrines. Oh, yeah. Mother and general pastor at the top. And, oh, yeah. you know, there's a whole hierarchy going down to the thing. Yeah. And, and also, like, um, you know, for, like, for members who are more faithful in the church, who, like, attend more stuff, um, there's, like, deeper studies that they get to, to listen to. Like, for example, like I mentioned about that 2012 prophecy, right? That's not something that they taught on a Sabbath day. That's something they taught in the middle of the week when it was just the gospel worker members there. And they, they, in those specific studies, they actually don't even let you take notes for. So um, Exactly. Yeah, so, I mean, depending on where you rank faith level-wise, like, you might hear something, you might hear something more than, and also, I, when I was a member, I was told that the pastors actually know the exact last day, what that date is, whereas members don't, so. Okay. And their, their book, uh, this is their main countermeasure book that they use called The Staff of Moses. It's super hard to get. And even most regular members don't even get a copy of it. It takes years to usually right. get this book. And it's very, you know, hard to get and selective. So, yeah, they, they don't give out their information easily. 
Okay. Encourage members to spy on one another. Absolutely. All right. mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, like one of the examples we could say, Kelsey, is where uh, the girl in Los Angeles was hit by the bus. Remember that? And they say, oh, if you're keeping the Passover, you can't die, right? And th then there became a big thing like, did she really take the Passover? Maybe she shouldn't take the Passover, like, right, huh? Oh, we saw her take the Passover and all that. Maybe she didn't drink it. So it's this whole network of watching and trying to explain how someone could take the Passover could actually be killed physically. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. and also, like, you know, when I was, uh, you know, within, you know, part of the leadership of the church, you know, every Sabbath day after everybody else left, um, they would gather the leaders together and we would discuss, you know, um, who showed up, who didn't show up, why didn't they show up, who do we think could, you know, has strong enough faith that they can become leaders, they, they can become unit leaders, um, just those kinds of those kinds of things, like the status of, you know, how we classified their faith. So 100, like if one member was like, had something wrong with their faith or if they looked online, we were expected to report it up. And there's cameras all over the place too. Yes, like we're talking and kitchen and, and the overseer will come running down if, you know, there's any flirtation or anything, it gets weird. Yeah. Okay. Major category number four, this is the T of the bite model, thought control. And first up, not allowed to ask questions. 100% not allowed to ask questions. Or if yeah. you ask questions, it's because there's something wrong with your faith. Like, like you feel, like they, they tell you that. There's something wrong with you if you have that question. Okay. Go back and read Ansel Hong's books. Yeah. You have a lack of faith. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you are taught thought killing or thought stopping techniques. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there's like, a lot like of I'm, fear. Like I mentioned with John chapter 13, that verse that says, you know, where Jesus says, mm. now you, you know, now you don't understand, but later you will. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I, I always say that this group motivates by fear, guilt, and shame, like at a credible level. It's completely different than mainstream Christian churches. And, you know, there's a lot of harsh rebukings, you know that, Kelsey, where the deaconess will pull you aside and just like rip into you and yeah. stuff. And it's it's pretty hardcore the way they'll, they'll rip people apart and make them feel terrible about themselves. Yeah. You're not serving mother, and mother's, you know, her, her, she hurt her knees all the time from praying, and here you are not having fish. You walked to the snow to preach, and here you are, you're not preaching right, and you're not yeah. giving enough, and it's just a massive guilt trip being in this group. And and they tell you that, um, that, you know, they rebuke you because they love you. And they said, and I was actually told that the worst position you can be in the church of God is being somebody that doesn't get rebuked, that they just let you do whatever you do yeah. because that means you're too far gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Contention is of the devil. What does that mean specifically? Well, I mean, okay, that's kind of like Mormons uh, would say you got a spirit yeah. of contention if you want to argue. But the thing oh, is, it's yeah. kind of like a dub it's like a double standard, Kelsey, because they can attack us all they want and say, oh, you're Babylon and you're a sun worshiper and all this kind of stuff. But the minute you want to say anything against father and mother, all of a sudden, like, you're the bad guy. Yeah, 100%. Okay. Yeah, you're on the side of Satan. Yeah, and they I, can I, rip I think it's similar uh, to the, the Mormon uh, dilemma, too, because, you know, they have the first vision account that basically says, you know, God says all of the other people are apostates, you know. All of their and all the police are wrong you know? and everybody yeah. is corrupt. Yeah, so who fired Double first, standard. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yep. so yep. no legitimate reason for leaving the group. Yeah, Never. 100%, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Attack the person instead of the facts. Yeah, that's... Yeah, literally just what I mentioned uh, before. It's like there's something wrong with you if you have a question. You're weak. You have lack of faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, put your doubts on the shelf. What oh, yeah. No, put means... your doubts on the shelf. You're not allowed to express doubt. You oh, to, yeah, like, yeah, you know, no. It's ridiculous mind control, yeah. yeah. And, and I think that uh, whole thing you said about you don't understand now, um, but you'll understand later. 
with fit into that is kind of like, okay, that, yeah. that's great. You have that doubt or you have that question. Just stick that up there. You You'll know, understand. Just, and, you know, hopefully the I've heard shelf that a lot doesn't collapse on you, you know, kind of thing. Okay, uh, and dismiss scary facts. Yeah, I mean, it, again, it's, it's along that same line that you just kind of, you know, you see something or you hear something that doesn't make sense. And you just kind of, you know, put in the back of your mind or a, or a lot of the times people are like if they, if something like something like uncomfortable kind of happens, you know, like within their physical life, like maybe like um, they get sick or something, you know, they're always thinking like, OK, you know, like heaven's heaven's very soon. Right. Uh, like, you know, father's coming soon is what they say. So which means like the end of the world is coming soon. So even though you're having a difficulty right now, it'll be all over soon. Okay. It's, it's definitely an end justify the means mentality. And I'll tell you, for anyone who's not encountered one of these guys yet, they are over the top committed and zealous. You think mm -hmm. uh, GWs and Mormons are committed? Wait till you run these guys. These guys are a thousand percent committed. They make Mormons look like nothing. Well, in the book, in the book of Revelation, it says, you know, the being hot or cold, right? Um, they said, you know, we we can't be lukewarm because God will spit us out of, you know, spit us out of, you know, His mouth. Like we have to either be hot for the gospel or cold for the gospel, and we want to be hot with, you know. They're zeal. intense. Everything is hardcore with these guys. Very, very intense. All right. Um so on to major criteria number five. This is the E of the bite model emotional control. And so number one, uh, emotions are a source of truth. What does that mean no. specifically? So no for this group. Okay, so that means that uh, kind of like the Mormon, uh, burning of the bosom would be a good example. Um, the touchy-feely you, you, thing, Kelsey. Yeah. I think they're kind of the opposite okay. because you could be having the worst day in the world and you're not allowed to express that you're, right. you know, going through something bad. Like you, you know, they're taking away mother's fragrance right now. Like you always have to say something positive. Oh, okay, like right. when you go to Korea, when you go to Korea and it's an awful experience, you know, you get rebuked if you're not given a good fragrance of what happened in Korea. It's the exact yes. opposite. You can't express your feelings. You can't. Right. You always have to toe that party line and make mm -hmm. everything look good. Yeah. They call it a fragrance, uh, Pastor, where they, they really try to, you know, make everything rosy in the church. There's never anything negative. Yeah, probably using Paul uh, to justify that. Yeah, so um, manipulation. Yeah, there's manipulation. Oh, huge. Manipulation oh, of facts, of history, uh, manipulation of people, yeah. Okay, peer pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Again, they oh, use a lot of like, fear. they use a lot of fear and guilt to you know get people to 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 remain involved. So, okay. social and they make you think like all cults, it's your own free choice. Excuse me. They think it's your choice, but it's not. The way they can kind of coerce you. Okay. So social consequences. Oh yeah. Like if they don't do something, something's going to yeah. happen. Yeah, like if yeah, if you're not following the church rules, you'll get kicked out of the. They kick people out of the church. Yeah. Okay. And if well, you're like, you out know, of church, mm -hmm. like the stories, Kelsey. Like you know, if you're you've heard the ones where you're in Sabbath, and then you you know you step outside the building, literally outside the back building, and they say, "Come back inside, come back oh. inside." Right. You know, like, something bad might happen to you. Like, come back inside. The churches are called Zion. Yeah. You know, that's you know yeah. they come back inside Zion something bad might happen to you if you literally step outside the physical building yes. on the Sabbath yeah because uh the John Gilja who, who they say is God the mother she um, gave a sermon that like if you if you could see she said if you could see all the the bad spiritual like demons and everything around you when you step outside of the church you would never want to step outside the church mm -hmm. so like on the Sabbath day like you know you you is there were some people that would go to the store to get something, but they would they would advise strongly against it, and they wouldn't let us go with other people from the church. They would say like, you know, that's what Fridays are for to prepare. Because sometimes people want they're there all day; they want to go buy an energy drink or a coffee. But the church says no; you need to stay in the church all day, like inside the building all day. Yeah, and it's like a fourteen hour day at church too on yeah. a Saturday. Well, yeah, maybe a little less, but it's a lot. Okay. Yeah. So this next one kind of fits into what you just said: uh, fear and guilt. 
Yeah. Yeah, they, I mean, they use that verse from, I think it's Second Peter, where it says that if you ever leave the church, it's like, you know, a dog returning to its vomit or a pig that's clean, you know, going back to, to play in the mud. So mm -hmm. it would have been bet. They, they say, you know, they use a verse that says, you know, it would have been better for them not to have known the truth at all than to have known it and, you know, you know, put it in disregard. Hebrews 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jason, I've studied a lot of groups and this group takes everything to a whole new level in their intensity. As you're getting, you're getting the picture here, right? It's yeah, everything, yeah, yeah, fear, yeah. guilt, shame, and yep. oh, it's it's unbelievable. All right, good feelings from God, bad feelings from Satan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Irrational fears. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, literally, like you're thinking every day it could be the end of the world. So, okay. you know, father might come. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, mm -hmm. that's a big one. Or like when you were driving in your car, thinking yeah. if I don't well, they, listen to a they, certain type of music that I'm going to get into a car accident. Yeah. yeah. They make you watch these videos, right, Kelsey, of like destruction and everything. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, they, they not only make members, <laughs> normal members watch them, they made children watch them. I mean, they yeah. had these they had these short videos that they had on a site that they called UCC Space, and now that site's been taken down. But and I'm sure you know I'm not sure if they claimed those videos, but they definitely made those videos and definitely distributed them in the church. But you would see, and I, and I think they they probably took them down because they took like clips from like movies, and I and I don't know what movie this was from, but they had like this I, one I remember so strongly. It's like somebody standing at a fence and like this you know like nuclear bomb or something. Just Terminator like, 2. Oh, yeah, I think that's what it was. And, like, the, you know, the skin coming off the people's face. And, you know, there was another time I was watching, you know, I went to Seattle for a seminar where they did, like, you know, this whole, like, whole day seminar, you know, about what people say about the church on the Internet. And they sh they ended it with this. I don't know. They didn't make this church because the, they, they didn't make this video because this video was on YouTube. I know they didn't make it, but they showed it. And it was, like, it was, like, showing like what's going to happen to you in hell if you like date somebody or if you do something it's like if you date somebody like you're gonna like it, it was graphic wow. it was absolutely i mean it showed people getting like sexually assaulted for their sins in hell i mean and you wonder why they had PTSD, right yeah, and i saw and i and actually i actually saw somebody leave because of because they showed that video they didn't make it but they showed that video and it was it was beyond graphic so, use of your past sins against you. Yes, because they say, like, think about, like, how your life was before the church, right? You, you know, you did this, you did this, and now that you've been in the, like, there's some people who, you know, maybe they did drugs before, maybe they were in jail before, and they say, you know, that was your life before the church. Now look at your life after the church. You know, is the church really so bad? No, the church, you know, helped you straighten your life out. Or they'll say like, "Oh, you used to be like this." Or um, if you're in the church and you did something bad, you know, you, you'll you'll still hear about it. So you know, they even make Jason. They even make your birthday a bad day right. because your yeah. birthday is the day that you got kicked out of the kingdom of heaven, the pre-existent yeah. world, for trying to kill mother and wow. father. That's a day of shame that you don't like, and you have to celebrate father and mother's birthdays at Zion. You know, go over there and have a big thing, but you can't. You cannot celebrate your own birthday. That's a that's an awful day. So yeah. yeah, definitely. And 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 they they, I know some members they would celebrate their birthday like on the side. They never you never told anybody on the down what birthday was in the church. Oh you yeah, never, you never told anybody that, and you also never told anybody your age too when you were in the church. Um, but like when I first joined the church, um, I remember, um, you know, the the overseer and his wife were taking like a cake to someone for their birthday, and I remember saying, "Oh, tell the, you know, tell the person happy birthday," and she's like, "No, no, no, no." we don't celebrate birthdays we're just doing this to show him love because like they wanted him to come to the church mm -hmm. um but like i was told directly like we do not celebrate birthdays in the church of god so like with the mormons the pre-existence of the less valiant spirits who are paying for it now right with um a dark and loathsome skin according to mormonism um they do it in the sense that you know we tried to kill father mother they have a heavenly play movie and they show there how we tried to kill father and mother and again same thing it's just like our we're in the city refuge we're in the prison right now because of it 
Yeah, you know, some of these things that you mentioned, it's almost like, because I know that this group came after some of the more prominent groups, um, it's almost like they just took Seventh-day Adventism, Mormonism, uh, Jehovah's Witness, um, and, and some of these other groups and just kind of mixed and matched uh, some of their doctrines and, and practices. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, Definitely well, a lot of Mother God yeah. stuff. Go ahead. Well, the, the leader, mm -hmm. I mean, the leader, he started on Sound Home, he was baptized in a Seventh day Adventist church. Mm -hmm. And a lot of his doctrines are leveraged. Like in his green book that, that Steve was showing, he calls like Ellen G. White a prophetess. Oh, wow. You know, okay. So, yeah. And, and they, they believe, like, like the Seventh day Adventist, they believe keeping the Sabbath, mm -hmm. Jesus is Michael the Archangel, the foot washing, you know, ceremony, mm -hmm. um, the 1844 date, the cleansing of the sanctuary. I mean, so many doctrines yeah. to the Seventh-day Adventists, okay. they kind of bring into this group a lot, not just a few, a lot of things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. You know, uh, Satan's a scapegoat. I mean, oh, on and on and on. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you never know that you're forgiven. Yeah, they, oh. they, they, yeah, they, they teach you that, that, you know, Passover is the way to the forgiveness of sins. Um, and that, you know, your sins are also cleansed on the Day of Atonement. But at the same time, like they, you know, you're cleansed, but then, you know, you still commit sin even unknowingly. And because of, you know, all the sin that you commit, God the Mother carries that, you know, as a spiritual sanctuary, she carries that sin all throughout the year. So you're mm -hmm. basically, you know, causing her pain with your sin. So even though, yeah, technically on those days, they say you receive the forgiveness of sins, you're still sinning. And, you know, even if you keep the Passover, which is and Day of Atonement, you know, which, you know, supposedly cleanses you of those sins, it's still not enough to necessarily enter the kingdom of heaven or to be fully forgiven. And right. Jason, I know this one might be a little familiar. So they believe there's 144,000, the great multitude, right? So most regular members, they call them gospel workers, you know, they're going to be, you know, members of great multitude. But if you really work hard and do every preach a lot, you know, keep all your feasts and everything, you're going to, you have a ch shot at being part of the 144,000. The 144,000 after they die will be able to become creators. Now they're not saying all out God like Mormonism, but they can create their own worlds and everything. Mm. And they're gonna have like wings like angels 10 miles wide, mother says. Mm. So there is like a two class system. So when you ask that question, there is a bit of a nuance there that you don't know who's gonna make the 144,000. Right. You gotta work your tail off. You gotta give a lot of money. You gotta preach a lot. And if you're worthy by your works, then maybe you're gonna be chosen to be this special class who uh, get to be what part of the part of the 144,000? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then this one, uh, please let me know if you need me to explain the double bind. Yeah, what I don't know what that. One okay, is. so uh, like the Mormon prayer uh, of asking in in Moroni ten, asking uh, you to pray if the Bible or, or the Book of Mormon is true. Right. It actually says pray if it's not true, um, but that's just a side note. Um, and there's only one correct answer, right? You think that there's multiple legitimate uh, answers or ways of responding, but if you come back and say, well, I prayed and he said no, or I prayed and I didn't feel anything, or, you know, I prayed and, you know, whatever. Then they'll say, okay, well, you need to go, go to church. You need to, you know, read more. You need to change, you know, get rid of sins in your life. And you, there's always something for you to do until you come back with the right answer, which is, oh, yeah, God told me it was true kind of thing. So um, do, they, do they do that kind of thing? They don't have a prayer for truth, but according to, you know, Ansung Hong, you know, we know that Ansung Hong is second coming Christ because he brought us to Passover. So maybe biblically they would say that. There's not a prayer. I think this double bind has to be a little more broad than just that specific idea of that. But. Right, yeah. No, it, it's more of the practice um, where you are asking a question and you're making somebody think that there's two or more uh, legitimate responses. But, but there's really fact, only one There's really them. only one. Um, I, I, can't, I can't think of anything in particular, but I mean, they do say there's only one truth okay. and they have that. So, I mean, yeah. Okay. So major criteria number six, high demand discipleship. 
Oh yeah. And so oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so covering theology. It doesn't get worse. <laughs> yeah. So covering theology. Uh, if you, that's basically where um, you're yeah. underneath somebody and they're underneath somebody and they're underneath somebody. Yeah. And it goes all the way. They the they have that. Like, so like the ICE, Kelsey, so like the ICC, you're assigned a personal discipler, and then you have to go to that discipler to grow. Well, that's definitely the case in the WMSCOG, because uh, Kelsey will tell you, like, you're responsible for all your fruit. So just okay. say you led 10 people, you're the branch, they're the fruit, right? You led all these 10 people there, and they're there, not there on a the Sabbath. What's the deaconess going to say to you, Kelsey? <laughs> That, like there's something wrong with you that they're not coming to the, the church. yeah wow. massive guilt so there's definitely that relationship between the branch and the fruit you're responsible for all the people if they miss sabbath you're the one who gets in trouble and chewed mm -hmm. out rebuked by your leadership so absolutely i'd say yes on that one big time okay all right um group makes major decisions for you yes all decisions yes. actually that's one thing that i struggle with when i when I left was, you know, um, like making decisions without asking someone permission first. And even, even when I was at work, I would have people, um, say like, you don't need to ask permission for that. And so I had to, like, it, it really took a little bit of time for me to, to, you know, not ask permission before doing certain things or yeah, or waiting for someone to tell me specifically what to do. Um, so you, I mean, everything you had, I mean, like I said, you know, when, when I was, you know, sick and, you know, I had to go to the doctor, right. Asking them like, Hey, I'm sick. I need to go to the doctor, but service is coming up. Like I, sh you know, I shouldn't have to ask the church. Can I go to the doctor? Right. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. You fear that bad things will happen if you don't comply. Oh, 100%. oh my gosh. Like, yeah, if you miss the Passover or Kelsey, all the fear they have, if you leave the church, something bad's going to happen to you, right? You like literally bad accident. things will happen. You're going to get cancer yeah. or stuff like that. It's unbelievable. Okay. Yeah. One-on-one uh, -on -one discipleship. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, Elohim Academy. Well, so one-on-one -on -one discipleship, um, does that mean like along the lines of like, you know, you have kind of like a mentor, like yeah. you have a, you have a person you're, yeah. So, so like, like C was mentioning with like the branch, right? Okay. So like if I preach to somebody and they come and get baptized, I'm their branch and they're my fruit. Right. Okay. So it, it, the, the, the relationship with the branch to fruit, it, it really, from my experience really depends on like the, the, how big your church is, how big the branch is, or sorry, how big the church is. Cause it's like, the Zion, if, yeah. yeah, the Zion, because if you're in a smaller church like a house church that relationship between branch and fruit is probably a lot stronger than if you're in a bigger church because say i preach to somebody say i preach to somebody who's an adult female over 30 years old i'm not going to be the person teaching them right i'm in the young adult group right somebody else is going to be teaching them i'm going to be like texting them encouraging them to come but i'm not going to be the person that listens to their problems or or studies with them so it really just depends but even if you're not like to your branch like responsible like you there's a group leader that you report into and okay. you're supposed to tell them like everything so and they you know give you guidance on, on what to do or what to say or they go up to the overseer and say hey so and so has this issue what do i say to them okay they actually have arranged marriages in this church i don't know if yes. that would help okay. constitute that too but you know they'll often pair someone they'll go to dinner and that'll be their whole thing it'll often be like a a Korean gal who doesn't even speak English and they'll put her with an American guy, they'll go to dinner and it's like, you guys want to get married? Be gospel workers together. That's literally how it works, yes. A lot so, of you know, and they're, they're kind of, their leadership kind of t gives them a lot of that guidance and pressure. They kind of make things to free will, but they kind of pressure them to kind of do a lot of arranged marriages in this group too. Because if you say no, then there's something wrong with you for saying no, like you're shallow or you're not a good gospel worker. Yeah. You don't care about the gospel and doing God's yeah. work. Because that's why they do the arranged marriages, so that they can send these people, these couples out to, you know, start a house church and, you know, expand the church. So if you if you say no, basically you're saying like, oh, I don't want to, you know, do the gospel work to the fullest. I don't want to help expand the church. 
So there's that kind of accountability that's really different than we see in our churches. In other words, that's, I don't know if that fits your definition, but yeah. it's it's pretty yeah. bizarre. Uh, did they um, predate the Moonies? No. Yes. Well, no, no. it depends well, okay, how listen. you look at it. Depends how you look at it. it, it I mean, when you think, because An Sung Hong, like, he, they, they teach that he was baptized in 1948, that he started his ministry in 1948, and I think I think Moon Sung Young was a few years later, but I, I could be wrong. Yeah. Steve, you're there. No, he was. He was. He's in the 50s. But the thing is, I always tell people the church in its current version, they try to say it's 64. It's not. It's 85. There was no Mother God. There wasn't all these doctrines. Right. An Sung Hong said he was Elijah. He never said he was second coming Christ like they say now. They never said. He said they say he's the Holy Spirit. Is there oneness, right. you know? And none of that stuff was ever, ever taught until 1985. So right. I, I always say the real start of the church is pretty recent. It's 85. The version of the church that exists in 64 is completely different than the church that existed in 85. And that's kind of when we have to start and, dating the church. It was a major it's split. not even the same church name in 1964. No. They were Witnesses of Jesus Church of God. On some whole started right, right. Witnesses of Jesus Church of God. He never started World Mission Society Church of God. That was started by John Gil Jha and Kim Juj Hol. And I agree, I agree with what Steve's saying. And and also some of the um, the unification church doctrines, like um, you know, explaining how uh, Christ must come or the second advent must come from Korea, that coming on the clouds means coming in the flesh. Those teachings actually do predate on some whole teaching those same things. So that that's one important thing I want to mention. So a different leadership, different name, different doctrines. Yeah, it, it's two different churches. Mm -hmm. An Sung Hong never knew World Mission Society Church. Actually, World Mission Society Church of God wasn't even the original name of the church. It was mm -hmm. Witnesses of An, An Sung Hong Church of God. That's what they named it. But when they wanted to expand to America in order to get rid of all the bad press that they were getting in Korea because of they were promoting end times in 1999, they changed the church name so that when people in the U.S. were to search the church, they wouldn't get any of the they wouldn't find any of the bad stuff about the church. That people in Korea were saying, um, I mean, yeah. I, and and I know from firsthand account that you know people when like because the Church of God like will rent out buildings or they'll they'll they'll, they'll request to rent or buy buildings in the in the U.S. And when I was in Seattle, we actually we had one um, one place turn us down because they searched our church online and they saw that it was a cult and they refused to sell their property to a cult. So. Okay. Moon, Moon started in 54 anyway when Jesus appeared to him up when he's walking around, so a little different. <laughs> okay. All right, major criteria number seven, uh, they fall outside core Christian doctrine. And, and so... Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. So, uh, I don't think we believe Mother God. So the idea that uh, all have sinned. Do they believe oh. that? They, they, they think that we're all sinners in the kingdom of heaven, that we committed... Pre-existence. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. The question I forgot to ask Steve and Kelsey in my interview with them is, Do does the World Mission Society Church of God believe in one God as the t scripture teaches? And they clearly do not because they believe in An Song Hong as a father and in Heavenly Mother as well. And that's clearly a, a deviation from the one God, which is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as Christians believe. Uh, deity of Jesus. They believe Jesus is, is God, that he is, but not in the same sense like that general Christians believe. They say like they believe in, in a form of modalism. They think that right. oneness. Okay. Yeah. yeah, oneness. They think the Father, they think, you know, there was God the Father in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. God the Father came in the flesh as Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ yeah. is, yeah, yeah, like that. Okay, but, and they, no, but they still the believe. Spirit. But they still would say agree that you know Jesus is God. Not not like we would because they say yeah. Jesus isn't God anymore. They say now An Sang Hong is the Holy Spirit. So, you know Jesus is kind of out of the picture. Okay, so I'd but, say no on that. It's, okay. it's it, you know in a very broad but in a specific sense, no. They say directly we are not saved by the name of Jesus, but they do yeah. think they, they, they have think a hymn that, about that. They think that An Sang Hong is the same Jesus who appeared 2,000 years ago. So they'll even say in one of their sermons that An Sang Hong died on the cross 2,000 years ago. 
Well, yeah. Blasphemy. Okay, uh, so the humanity of Christ. What is yeah, that? he was a man when he was here. Yeah, he was fully male man when he was here. Okay, but you would say that um, because they no longer believe that Jesus is a thing. Um, well, He's I guess this would, uh, this would apply to the fact when he was here. So we'll we'll go ahead and give him that. <laughs> well, they, they they think that when he was here, he was he was God in the flesh. They don't think that he was like human being. They think he was God in the flesh. Right, which is what we would say. But um, those are kind of separated out. You know, Jesus said in John, you know, eight, unless you believe that I am, you'll die in your sins. Okay. So that's the deity. And then First John, you know, he says, uh, if you deny that Jesus has come in the flesh, then you're. But good. they, oh, okay, gotcha. Kelsey, explain the Savior in three ages. That it changes that up, Kelsey. Just give a quick Savior in three ages. So they, they you want they, me to do it? Oh, I can, I can do it really quick. So they okay. said that you know, the you know, from the time of Adam and Eve until now, everything's divided into three ages. There's the age of the Father, age of the Son, age of the Holy oh, Spirit. Okay. The age of the Holy Spirit is the last days. So that's our time. So they say within each age, you know, there's a there's a name of the Savior, and you know. It, the age of the Father, name of the Savior was Jehovah. Age of the Son, name of the Savior was Jesus. And age of the Holy Spirit, name of the Savior is An Sang Hong. And so, like, if so, for us living in the age of the the Holy Spirit, no longer can we be saved through the name Jehovah or Jesus. We are only saved in the name An Sang Hong. Therefore, we should only pray in the name of An Sang Hong, only witness to the name An Sang Hong. But they, but they believe, but they believe that the Father, Son, Holy Spirit are the the same. It's, it's one God playing three roles. One right. person, one person yes. with yeah. three different roles. Right. Yeah. So like, they don't like, believe in three persons of the Trinity. Right. There's civilian oneness. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So like, like, UP, to, like UPCI and you know some of the other exactly people. William Branham. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the gospel: uh, Jesus died for our sins and rose again from the dead. They, yes, yes, but. It's, yes, it qualifies. It's more, it's more convoluted than that, yes. you got to keep Passover because that's kind of how you become well, a believer. Well, say the reason why he died on the cross was to put the Passover into effect, and the Passover yeah. gives us the forgiveness of sins. So but they don't talk about the cross. Okay. They think the cross so is a pagan symbol. Jesus didn't yes. die for our sins. Jesus died to bring the Passover and the Passover. Yes. Keeping the, okay. So, yes. no. That that's is. the center of the Bible is the Passover to them. Yes. Okay. Uh, and so, do they believe that in a physical resurrection, that Jesus physically rose from the dead? Yes. Yes and no. So, he did resurrect, but since now he's the Holy Spirit, I keep asking them, what happened to his body? Like the witnesses say, it turned to gases, right? Well, basically, Jesus ditched his body somehow because he doesn't have a body now, and he became the Holy Spirit, so something happened to the body of Jesus, so... He might have temporarily raised with this, the, the body, but now that he's the Holy Spirit, he's obviously lost that physical body he resurrected with. Meanwhile, yeah. as Christians, we look at Colossians 2.9. In him, Paul writes 30 years after the resurrection, in him is dwelling all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, present tense, right now. But for them, you know, that's long gone. You know, when he comes back, it's going to be Father. <laughs> all right. I'll have to take a look at that present tense later. <laughs> you got me. Oh, sir. Yeah. Okay. It's a great verse. Um, it's a great verse. Okay. No, I'm just kind of a Greek nerd, so. Uh, Me too. All right. All right. <laughs> so, uh, salvation by grace alone through faith alone. Absolutely no way. Absolutely not. No Absolutely way. Absolutely not. <laughs> Kelsey, you know, just to illustrate the point, let me just put it this way, Jason. Kelsey. What do you got to do to be saved as a member of WCG? It's not just Passover, is it? What do you got to do to be saved? I don't know. Do we got time for all this? I, mean, <laughs> yeah, I, can, do, I can do it real quick. Sabbath day, Passover, preaching. The, you know, you got to preach like Tithing. a certain amount of times every month. Tithe, Feasts. offerings every service. You know, Feasts. you gotta keep all the feasts. And you got to, like, you know, make sure you believe in mother. Day. Believe in mother. Believe in, you know, unsung home. You know, yeah. fall, obey every single thing they tell you to. It's um, massive. It's, it's a it's, burden. I, yeah, I keep going on and on and on. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, so, major criterion number eight: scripture twisting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Next. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> inaccurate quotation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. Twisted Isn't translations. That the quotations, a like quotation of the Bible. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, they okay. misquote other stuff too. Okay. Twisted translations. Yes. They use NIV mainly. Yeah, actually, so. and then that's funny because um, even up until the point I left, they were using the 1984 version of NIV because right. NIV got a new version in 2011. And it's funny because they actually told us like that version, that version is not exactly correct. So, mm -hmm. keep, you know, keep trying to use the 1984 version. But then, you know, obviously, it you know, new version means the old version. You know, you can't find that in stores as often. So when they were doing sermons, they were still using the 1984. But for, like, certain studies, there were, like, other versions of the Bible. Like, for example, I think they used the NLT a lot and the KJV, mm. where they would show just one verse from those oh, because it yeah. had a key word in that verse that uh -huh. proved their point even more. But for the majority, they used 1984 NIV. Okay. Uh, ignoring context. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Stop reading at a certain point. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Wordplay. What does it mean? Oh, yeah. They're the worst that? in the world for that. So what they, they do is they'll, they love to do this thing, like I say, this hermeneutic, where they'll say, if this equals this in this passage, mm. then this equals yeah. in this passage, yeah. therefore this is this. So A yeah. equals B and B oh, equals yeah. B. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Kelsey, what's, uh, so Jesus said, uh, you know, uh, I'm going into the, uh, he's coming with the clouds, right? What are clouds, Kelsey? Yeah. Clouds Tell them why present. clouds are clouds. You say clouds represent flesh, because it, cause in the Bible it'll say Jude, like, um, Job. Yeah, okay. Jude, and yeah, Jude. Like, clouds say, without like, water. like it'll say like clouds yeah. and witnesses. They say witnesses are people, therefore clouds represent people, clouds are flesh. So it's like wordplay. They constantly yeah. do this nonsense. So they try to say, well, Jesus come with the clouds. Ah, Jesus come with the people. Or, like or in Revelation where it says that, you know, you know, Christ will come on a white horse, right? They say, they show a verse in the Bible that says horse, this says their horses are flesh. So they say, yeah. oh, when it says he's coming on a horse, it means he's coming in the flesh. Okay. This crazy equivocation hermeneutic. Yeah. It's just yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, speculative yeah. readings. What does that mean? So, okay, so uh, the text says something, but they're just amplifying and kind of running off and. Uh, oh kind yeah. Of, yeah. Yeah. John, Genesis one twenty six, and it says, "Let us okay. make man in our image." Uh, our oh, means mother, yeah, father. Yeah. 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 Okay. Selective sighting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're, we're checking a lot of boxes here, aren't oh, yeah, we? Yeah, we are. Leaving the JWs in the dust. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah, I think we did. Uh, we will. We're, we're getting close. I think they got, ended up with 48, and uh, we're already at 44. So. Nice. All right. uh, <laughs> inadequate evidence. Yeah. They actually, you know what's funny? They, I, I can't show it. I can't show it because they got, they actually got in trouble for this book. They have a book they call the Evidence Book, okay? And it's oh, yeah. got a whole bunch of like copyright stuff. Um, by Christian it. authors, so it's by cr a lot of Christian yeah. books, and they took the liberty to put it all in a binder to take it yeah. out of context to try to show Christian beliefs, and they got sued. They couldn't make the book anymore. Yeah, but they take all those out of context too, and so exactly. they, they call it evidence, but it's not really evidence. Um, and yeah, and like I said, with like, you know, I, I, I said, you know, one of my questions to them was, you know, wh how, where's the proof that Ansel was baptized in 1948? No evidence. Okay. So. 54. All right. Rejecting biblical authority. No, well, they believe in the Bible's authority as a rule. Yeah. They're not like some cults, but it's just the way they twist it. They kind of add to it. So basically mother's words and everything i mean like just like they mm -hmm. they try to say oh we are so biblical nobody can fault us on our doctrine but like they add a lot of they make up doctrines like the example i just gave you that we can become creators and have you know wings mm -hmm. like angels 10 miles wide where do you see that in the bible you don't it's like modern day revelation from okay. mother yeah i we'll, see this one we'll is get there in a second <laughs> I see this one's kind of like borderline uh, because yes, they they believe in the Bible. They say the Bible is the word of God, but at the same time, they but, put, they put more authority into Ansel Holmes' mm -hmm. books because those are his interpretations of the Bible. So mm -hmm. I say it's kind of borderline, in my opinion. 
they don't even talk about Jesus that much. Like you go to no. a Sabbath service or listen to the uh, pastor, general pastor there, they don't even talk about Jesus. Everything's about mother and father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like it's unbelievable. You don't hear about the cross. You don't hear about grace. You don't hear about Jesus. It's just like a whole different gospel. Okay. But would they teach something like, uh, for example, that um, the Bible has been corrupted? No. No. They say there's no contradictions in the Bible. But that being said, there's a certain part of one of his books where he, where Unsung Hong mentions that some of the verses, like specifically in the book of Job, um, were people speaking out of kind of like emotion, kind of. Like, not necessarily that it's like words of God, but... Um, but yeah, but for the most part, mm -hmm. they say Bible is perfect. Yeah, it, for God. It's authoritative. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So redefining terms. Oh my gosh. What does what does that mean? Right. Uh, like well, they take becoming a, flesh and horses becoming flesh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They're kings. Yeah. All right. We we'll use other languages too. Um, like for example, like uh, what was one of them? Like coming from the east. Like, oh, yeah. They have this. They have this subject called coming from the east, where they say um, they use. I, I think it's the book of Isaiah. They say that you know Christ must come, or the second coming Christ. He has to come from the the east. But the word used for east in Spanish is like Oriente, which means like the Orient. So they say, oh, Asia. Second coming Christ must come from Asia. So Ansung Hong is the Korean Messiah oh, okay. coming back. Yeah, so they'll they'll bring up like some like certain words in other languages, um, none of them which are Hebrew or Greek. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. to say like oh to kind of prove their points a little bit more. They're not great scholars. Okay. All right. Major criteria number nine: unique scripture. So, do they have their own translation of the scripture? No. no, but they have Ansa Hong's books, which basically, right. these are the truth books, and these are the words of the Father, right, the books. Okay. So they're supplemental. They're basically the words of the Father. All right. And the next one is New Revelation. So Check that yeah. one, too. Yes, you know. Absolutely. They say they don't. They say they, that they teach the same thing that the apostles taught 2,000 years ago, but that's 100% not true. Yeah. Okay. Uh, additional scriptures. Just yeah. Ansa Hong's books, yeah. okay. which are basically and, father's writings for and, today. And Kim Ju Chol's books, too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If they're looked at it as the same level as the Bible, then that would count. They, they, yeah. So one of, one of Kim Ju Chol's books is the, the one that Steve just held up, the My Sheep Listen, My Voice. But, That's uh, one of the truth books. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So they call it the truth books. Okay. Uh, unique interpretation. Yeah. Oh, next. <laughs> 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 bye bye, JWs at this point. I think we just. Yeah, uh, we just got 49. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so. This is the record to beat. Major criteria number 10, and that is they're the one true church. Yes. So, oh boy. They are. Do they believe in a worldwide apostasy? What is apostasy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that so when the church not. fell away, Kelsey, so they teach that the Sabbath uh, was uh, the, basically the, the Passover was abolished in 325. And then the Passover was changed in 321. So they that think Sabbath that the, the, the yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I thought I said Sabbath and Passover abolished in 325. So basically, they say that the church was basically gone, and then Ansung Hong had to restore it, and he had to open up the seals and yeah. and reveal Mother into the last age and bring back Passover. Passover. Yeah. Okay, uh, corruption of the Bible. No. No. Okay. Nobody else is saved outside of their group. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
They have the most correct book on the face of the earth. Well, you say books, it would be their own, yeah, their own books. Yeah, absolutely. Most okay. correct truth, yeah. Okay. And they have the best approach to Christianity on the face. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.